The Legendarium Podcast is brought to you by, by you. So please visit patreon.com slash legendarium to, to support, support the show. But for now, welcome, welcome to, to the, the Legendarium. Legendarium. Put a pin in this theme because it matters. The difference between loving and... And what, and Ryan? Casual <laughs> sex. You can say casual your, sex. Your wife is sitting right next to you. I know. That's the thing. Put, casual will you just put a bleep there. back where that's, <laughs> that was so as if I said it? Yeah, I will. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to the Legendarium Podcast. This is episode, I think, number 217. If everything went according to plan uh, last week, you know, I mean, because we're recording this uh, the day that it airs, right? Yes, because yes. we, we do everything live because we love our audience. Everything is live. We <laughs> respect your time too much to record ahead. Uh, anyway, I am Craig Hanks, your host. And uh, let's see, over there, he's sneaky enough to be a wet boy, but he can't seem to handle his sword well enough for the job. It's Ryan Bruckman. <laughs> After my last response, I'm going to just <laughs> not say... <laughs> and if you reach into your pouch of poisons and pull out the deadliest one, it would be powdered glare of Stephanie Bruckman. It doesn't quite work if the glare's on a podcast, does it? So. No, it's a, that's that's. If one of us goes silent, though, you'll know that we've said something wrong. <laughs> and if and if he were my debtor, I'd take the contract at half price. It's Griffin Stark. Hey guys, how's everyone, how's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> doing great. So Griffin, you are joining us remotely from Nashville. Yes. Nashville, Tennessee. Very proud to be here. And we are here very, very happy to have you. Uh, Griffin is an author of a, a book called Immortal Girls, which you can yes. check it out. And the beauty, and th this is this is the most modern thing I've ever seen in publishing. If you spell Immortal Girls, make the S a five so that it actually shows up in your Google search results. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, so, but it's called, but it's about five girls, right? Five immortal yes. girls. Um, yes. and, uh, why don't you give us a, a little elevator pitch on that? What's the book about so people can go check it out? Okay. Well, basically, um, you know, I to start, I'll, I'll start with the takeaway. The takeaway from this book would be, um, I would say hope redemption and that uh, no matter what kind of predicament you're in, you know, tomorrow's another day and, you know, things will get brighter. But, um, the story takes you from 1065 AD to present day New York. Now, during the say 1065 AD to present day New York, the immortal girls come together. They're predestined from birth to become an immortal girl, and they're all underdogs. And they all they all overcome dire circumstances to become an immortal girl. And then when they get to um, present day New York, they face their greatest enemy, and that's in forever genetics. And they are trying to formulate a um, a plan where they just basically make say five or three, or two, however immortal guys they can make to take out the immortal girls and rule the world. All right. Well, yeah, it, so it's fantasy fiction, and the yeah. girls can fly. <laughs> because, because, I'm gonna because give you why a little, not? I'm going to give you a little elevator pitch uh, school here. Lead with the girls can fly from here on out. <laughs> okay, I will. Okay, and you know what? And they're unkillable. And you know the other thing about them is they actually each, they're all 18, and each one of them have a different power that the other one doesn't have. Like, for instance... Rachel can heal. Um, you know, Skylar can 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 communicate with animals telepathically. So, so at what point does Captain Planet show up? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Captain Planet actually um, got his butt kicked because what happened was, and I'll tell you why. There's actually, ironically, you say that is that the um, is that the Immortal Girls actually Caitlin, one of the Immortal Girls, talks about how they could kick any superhero's butt. And if they would just come to life, you know, and they, it's like a whole joke about it. So nice. anyway, you'll read it. All right, all right. Well, it, I, I'm personally a little intrigued, uh, even Thank though you. I'm not an 18 year old girl, I, I still feel like it's a fun premise. And so if uh, any you. of our listeners are, are uh, intrigued as well, go check it out. You can go to griffinstark5.com or obviously you can just Google search it or Amazon search it. Go check out the book. And if you happen to beat us to it, if you happen to read it before we do, let us know. Uh, go to thelegendarium.reddit.com. That's where you can join our uh, podcast conversations. And if you happen to read Griffin's book before we do, let us know. Uh, let us know what you thought of it. 
Uh, anyway, the other thing I'll mention as far as housekeeping goes, as I always do, is patreon.com slash legendarium, which is where you can go support the show. We hope that you will do so, and we thank those who do. So, are we ready to start talking about the Way of Shadows again? Yes. Yeah. Um, this episode is going to feature heavily on the Reddit comments. We did a pre-discussion thread on Reddit. Uh, so thanks to those who submitted questions and comments for that. We will uh, get to a lot of those in this episode. I, I'm tempted to just jump right into those, but maybe what I'll do is say, Ryan, Stephanie, I'll, I'll kick it to you two first. Is there anything from the last episode that we didn't get to that you that you thought, oh, well, we, we really should have? Maybe we want to start with that here, or do we want to jump over to the other stuff? I mean, in the last episode, we really focused a lot on just kind of working through characters and talking about how they fit in the story and, you know, their depth and different uh, pieces there. Um, but there's just too many characters to get to all of them. But I would like to take just a second to to give an honorable mention, I guess, um, to characters in uh, Count Drake, because I think he's, yep. a, big, he's a big character um, that's worth, you know, looking and, at. And very interesting. He... he is one that you're glad to find stuff out about because it makes you go, huh, oh, wow, what a guy. What, he's he's interesting. Yeah, he comes, I mean, he's one who has swung the pendulum on both sides of the moral scale and is currently on the far side of, of uh, you know, religion and the God and every, and, and following that sort of thing. Um, so the Count Drake is worth talking about. Um, and Jarl, I think, he's a very minor character in this book. But he comes like he keeps coming back into Kylar's life. He's he's minor plot wise, but I would kind of argue that he's major in it, much like Eileen. He's major in his influence on Kylar and how Kylar right. sees the world and his background and stuff, right? Because Kylar's biggest influencers would be Eileen, Jarl, Mama K, and Durzo, and, and Count Drake. Well, yes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say you don't see that one. As prom as prominent because, but it's definitely a residual from the beginning. Which one, Jarl or Rat? Rat. Yeah, Rat is a huge influence, not necessarily for good. Uh, yeah. Okay. Do we want to dive into any of those? Uh, actually, you know what? Let's let's do that. Let's talk. Uh, I, I honestly can't remember if somebody mentioned the villains on any of the Reddit comments. Someone um, brought up Rat. Yeah, somebody brought up Rat. So maybe I'll kick it to you, Griffin, first. Uh, we talked about all of the the protagonists and their allies in the in the first episode, but maybe let's start by talking about our antagonist in Rat. Uh, what what stuck out to you with Rat? What did you find memorable? Uh, is there anything you would have changed about how Rat worked with this story? Uh, why don't I just let you go on him for just a sec? Okay, um, you know I love villain characters, and Rat was a very interesting villain. Is a very interesting villain character to me. The thing that 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 I didn't really like about his character was there was nothing really redeeming about him. I mean, there was zero thing. I mean, zero. I mean, he was just a bad dude, you know. <laughs> and even you know, you know, they talk about you know, obviously the rape, you know, and that sort of thing. Uh -huh. And it's just, you know, I, I couldn't find anything redeeming in him, and so I I found myself really just disliking the character. You know, I mean, obviously he's a necessary character. I understand why he exists in the story. Okay, and I get that. But I also like to see something like, I'll give you an example. Um, in Die Hard, for instance, you know, Chris, or, uh, Hans Gruber. You know, he, he was a diabolical villain, but you still liked him. There was something redeeming him or something at least charming in him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing in rat. Even his name spells it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, if, you, if you name a character rat, it's got to be a pretty disgusting, you know, character. I think I see what you're saying. I I would maybe push back just a little bit because um, there's there's something that I enjoyed. It, you know, okay, enjoyed. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> is, is, is this the moment when Craig comes out as a sociopath on the podcast? <laughs> oh, <that> would... <laughs> But <laughs> choose your wise. Choose yeah, yeah, exactly. Words, words carefully. But there's something to be said for this, uh, like how about so, making him so irredeemable, where he doesn't just. It's not just that he enjoys causing pain, but he feeds on that, and he is he he is driven mad by people who don't respond the way that he wants them to. They don't give him their pain. Uh, all that stuff. Stephanie, you're, you're looking so, at me weird and it's making me nervous. What are you going to well, say? Know, 
I think right. the biggest thing, like the conversation that stands out biggest for me with him is the conversation he has with Mama Kay at his house when he has the peasants come in and he, he feeds all of these people and then he Are you shoots. talking about Roth? They're the same person. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I just, I'm, okay, I'm, trying to remember the, I'm trying to remember the scene. <laughs> um, so, were they so, the same person? Like, yeah, yeah. Which did everyone, did you guys all, well, like, we all know foresee Rat, that coming? Rat or? and Roth are the same person, uh, right? Or was that a surprise? Ask, ask me again in a second. Let's get back to that scene. Oh, but, I, 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 want, I want to comment on that too because that's very interesting. You mentioned yeah. but, <laughs> Okay. But where he's sitting, so, and then he randomly kills four people. And there's that one person at the very end that's kind of, figured out how he kills people and he waits yeah, yeah. until the four are dead and then he comes in and he's like he finds that one peasant so interesting because he's like well he could tell everyone but then i might change things up and he could end up dead and then right before mama k leaves he's like how was your peasant and she's like wait a minute did you say pheasant or peasant and then you're like oh, yeah. is there like did he all of a sudden just feed her like these people that he just killed, like that just yep. cr that moment creeped me it out. Was I was like, so twisted. Oh my oh, yeah. gosh, that's so, uh, like it was great. Oh yeah, a little Hannibal Lecter stuff going on there. So okay, so yeah, so, what what did you want to say about the Rat Roth thing? No, no, no. I was gonna say that. Um, you know, I totally forgot. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Like, I totally. Uh, but, 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 It'll, it'll edge my mind again. I promise. It it but, was a question that somebody brought up somewhere. Uh, uh, here it is. Okay. Uh, Mitt Kivitz. I, I, I can't do this. Your reading of Reddit names is one of the highlights of the podcast. Is it? As I, <laughs> so user Mitt Kivitz asked, <laughs> uh, said, having Rat return to be the end villain was an interesting choice to me. In a lot of stories, the childhood enemy is either a one-time hurdle for the hero to overcome on their path or used as a measuring stick to judge how far the hero has come. Rat, <clears throat> excuse me, Rat works like the one-time hurdle, but then shows back up as a legitimate matured threat. It worked well enough, mm. but for some reason it stood out to me. I think the story would have been just fine if it was, if it really was Rat's underling, Roth, who rose to power in the opening le left by Rat's death. Um, the fact that Azoth had already beaten Rat once kind of made it seem obvious that Azoth would win again, even against the newer Rat. Um, I'm... <sighs> I think I see where this point is coming from, but I'm not sure that I totally agree. I I was definitely thrown off when I, I didn't see the rat reveal coming. I in retrospect I should have, but honestly I wasn't thinking too hard. I was just mm -hmm. I was just letting the story wash over me for my, you know, my first time through. And so yeah. I I wasn't thinking too hard about it. It's like rat and roth are actually close in naming wise and so yeah, you should see it coming. But, um, uh, yeah, it, it did throw me off and I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I like, I like both the childhood character and the adult character, even if they feel kind of weirdly disconnected to me, but I, but I enjoyed both of them as the worst possible kind of villain in both cases. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, my first read through, I did not see the rat. Uh, thing coming either oh good oh, okay Whew. i i didn't and um because it he does such a good job making it plausible because there was a kid named roth um and it does work like you you could believe that he would take that position i didn't see it coming either but um the thing that i've come to appreciate most about the rat um rat in this book here uh is actually how much he gives us in terms of preface for some of the things that are to come like when Rat is uh, talking to Neftada, your first read through, it's a scene that you probably don't even remember. Uh, I do so let's, not. Let's in, yeah. my, in the rest of us yeah, that re don't recap actually remember. <laughs> but can I ask you guys something? You know, I, I was thinking about this. I was gonna. I wrote this question down for you guys about this. Mm -hmm. um, my first read through, um, I still am very a little confused about a few things. But the second and third read through, it gets easier. It's one of those kind of where it gets easier and easier. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> yes. Now, okay. But now, let me ask you this because may, maybe the audience can get something from this too. Would I gain from reading this book maybe two or three more times before going to the next one? No. Okay. Got it. So you would okay. finish the trilogy and finish then the go trilogy back. and then go back. Now, okay. Craig, you okay, haven't finished cool. the trilogy, right? I have not. No. Okay. So Ryan's the, the only, only one, one here who it. has finished the trilogy. So this is going back to, like I said, the scene earlier in the book. Um, Neftada 
He's a character that whose name has is he come the, in the mage guy. Yeah, he he is a magical character. Okay. Um, he's there's he's a wizard, Harry. Yes. All right. <laughs> he is a magical character, but he's a magical character of of ill repute. Yeah, basically is yeah. how to put that. Yeah. Um, and he's yeah. talking to Rat, and he asks Rat. He says, um, you know what you you know what is your mission? You're, or you here's your he calls an Urtan. Yeah, your Urtan. That he uh, and Rat says, I'm taking over the Warrens. I'm going to become the Shinga. Like I'm. Oh right, is this where he talks about like uh, your, to, to please my father or, yes, or something? Yes. So you get an idea here, and basically it sets up that Rat is he's an Ursul. Like that is that's that's important. Like in this book, it doesn't really do a whole lot, but as a villain, he is our first taste of a bigger evil. And if he's the first taste, like you can imagine what's coming. You get your first bigger evil for free. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> he's the gateway gateway drug. He's the gateway bigger evil. But there you go. Uh, sorry, I I don't know what you were saying or what I threw <laughs> off the rails, but uh, you can continue. No, I I think Rad is a he's a good villain. He's a good first villain. He, he, mm-hmm. Uh. Yeah, I agree. I'm sorry. I had something else I was going to say, but I think it would be retreading some territory that I already did. So, no, I'm no, good. go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. I, I mean, if... uh, let's 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 get off of Rat, as he refused to do to others, um, and <laughs> so and let's let's bring up somebody else's uh, somebody else's Reddit comment. Okay, Joff Wu. Oh, say it. Jafu. Okay, all right. So user <laughs> Jafu, uh, one of our old pals, says, I enjoyed this book. Would like to hear some discussion on the magic. I was totally lost. <laughs> okay, so because we brought up Neftata, that made me think, all right, we need to talk about the magic system or lack thereof. Now, we've been accused, if you can, if you can believe this in the past, we've been accused of... Uh, overly heaping praise upon one Brandon Sanderson. I don't know where people are getting that from, <laughs> but whatever. Uh, no, but uh, one of the things that we've always really liked about him is his, you know, really strict magic systems, the hard magic that he writes. Um, and so I, I don't want people to get the wrong idea and think that we need that as readers you know that that we panelists need that as readers because in this story i didn't mind having the softest magic system that i've ever come across in part because the story didn't really focus on it that much at least not until the last 50 pages or so um but i i wasn't really bothered too much but I did feel at the end of the book, by the end of the book, I was going, okay, yes, it was really a soft magic system. I don't know what's going on, but I assume he'll clue me in as we go. And mostly it just made for some kick-ass fight scenes where, you know, he'd disappear and then chop some guy's head off out of nowhere. Yeah, great. Awesome. Magic. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, but yeah, what, what did you guys think of the magic system? Griffin, why don't you go first? Well, I think that, um, first of all, I love those kind of action scenes myself. So, you know what? I mean, I'm, you got a big thumbs up for me. But, um, you know, as far as soft and hard magic, you know, I, I, I do like soft magic to start off. I thought it was brilliant the way that they did that, you know. And the fact that um, it's kind of like, um, you know, J.J. Abrams once said, when you tell us, a, a, you know, a tale or a story, you want to do it in teaspoons, not ladlefuls. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So to me, it's kind of like they give me like a, a little bit of a build up, which I liked. That, that makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Ryan? I, before I say anything about the magic system, I want to do. I did this to Stephanie in the car, and I'm going to do this to the rest of you here. Oh, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Explain to me what you know about how the magic system works. Oh, no, that's a that's a great question. You know. What, it, before I, I'm not going to answer that. I'm not going to fall into this trap because you know why? I've seen it before. Have you? Did you ever watch the? Uh, did you ever watch the Mr. Plinkett reviews of the of the Star Wars prequels? Uh-uh. First of all, you have to go look up Red Letter Media on YouTube. Look for or just YouTube search Mr. Plinkett Star Wars, and uh, that's one of the things. It, it's one of the most brilliant 
deconstructions of the Star Wars prequels that I've ever seen. No, it is the most brilliant. And one of the things he does is he goes to all of his buddies and, uh, you know, they're all Star Wars fans and whatnot. And he'll say, tell me, who is Han Solo? What kind of person is he? And they, they all go off on how he's a rogue and he plays by his own mm. rules, etc. And then I'll say, who is Qui-Gon Jinn? Uh, <laughs> you know, you know what I want to say. Who is C three PO? And they can go on for for minutes on end talking about who C three PO is and what kind of character he is. And then they they say, uh, okay, so uh, who is Anakin Skywalker? You know, or who is Padme Amidala? Describe Padme without talking about her costumes for me. Um, and so it's a kind of a similar thing. And I'm not going to fall into your trap where you say, what can you tell me about the magic systems? nothing absolutely <laughs> nothing except that there's a power and talent is spelled with a capital t and that's all i got <laughs> i didn't quite understand it myself actually i mean i i think when i read the book again i will a little bit better but yeah i mean i'm, I'm not sure you will i'm not sure you will because there's nothing to understand what, what i gave you like what five words when you asked me i was like um well i know that there's levels and i know that not like it was yeah i don't there's not much. They did not give you anything yeah. really to understand the magic system of this book. So, and, and, although it may, it's not a bad thing though, because maybe, they, they, maybe you can use like your imagination. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I'm, uh, what, what I was saying originally was it didn't bother me. I, I would think before I started the book, if we were, if you were kind of teasing it out and having this discussion with me and saying, you will not be able to describe a single thing about the magic system after you finish the book. I would have said to you, oh, this is going to suck. I'm going to hate this. Uh, but I didn't. I I don't know exactly what it was. And I I think it has something to do with how he kind of decoupled the, the story, the needs of the story from the magic, mm -hmm. at least for now. I assume it'll take a larger, more central role later on. But for now he successfully separated the two so that I didn't care that I wasn't getting the information that I otherwise might need. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good writing. That's, that's, I mean, that, that, that's just, to me, that's excellent writing. Agreed. Because, agree. because you know what it doesn't, like, for instance, like, you know, you like, you take Jurassic Park without the dinosaurs, you got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And, and then in that case, it's just park. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you got nothing, basically. The same thing with the, you know, that's the way I, I, that's but that's my writer mind just interjecting. But anyway, go ahead, guys. Sorry. So, so here's the thing. Like, I, I find it interesting because so many people. I, I've been surprised how many people have come back and they've said, you know, I, I just didn't understand the magic system. There's not enough description in there. And I, I look back and I read through it. I'm like, there's stuff in there. You can know what's going on. But the thing is, is I feel like if I point out a couple of things, if I say a couple of things, you'd be like, yeah, I recognize that. It's there. I recognize it. Mm -hmm. But like the Kakari, that's a part of the magic system in this you recognize that that's a piece of the story. Sure. You don't know exactly how it works, but you know what it like it's, what it, it gives to him. At this point it's just the MacGuffin. Yeah. It's the thing. Oh, I love the MacGuffin. It's the thing that the, <laughs> whoa. Oh. Whoa, okay. All right. I got a response Sorry. out of that one. No, it's yeah, you did. If for for people who don't know what a MacGuffin is, this is a movie term mostly. It's the thing that the hero wants uh, and that the villains are trying to get as well. And so the classic example would be the Maltese Falcon. Uh, the example that our audience might actually understand would be the Ark in the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, yeah. And so it it's it almost doesn't matter. It usually doesn't matter what that object is or what it does. It's just all, that people want it. All that matters is that the hero wants it, the villains wants it, the villains want it, everyone's trying to get it. And that's okay, we... and that's what the Kakari Kakariko village what <laughs> I I can't yeah, the Kakari. Kakari was, yes. Do you know why I'm so excited right now? I, <laughs> I, I think we're going to find out. <laughs> you will. And, and, and then I promise I'll zip my lips. But, uh, <laughs> but um, there, was a, there is actually a MacGuffin in Immortal Girls. And I, and I did that to pay tribute to the one and only Alfred Hitchcock. Alfred Hitchcock, yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, well, anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Just, no, wow. no, no. So, That's yeah, cool. what else do you want to say about magic? So but here's the thing, the magic system. Um, if I ask you right now, how do they take in magic because there's there's like three conversations in the story that actually lay out how the magic system works but because of the way that they're written and where they are you don't feel like they're explaining the magic system they're resolving something else so for example kylar has he goes into basically a physical 
before he goes into a fight. And this uh, mage woman is looking over him, like blunting his weapons and making sure he's oh, not. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. And, I says, that. and she says, oh, you're broken. You, because everyone who is talented has three parts. Right. They have these three pieces to it. You're missing yeah. the conduit. You don't have that. So you won't ever be able to use your talent. You have a huge. Except that you will because you're our protagonist. And yes, you will. <laughs> Yeah, because of course he's a you will. You're, and you're not going <laughs> to die, dang it. <laughs> if you do, you're going to come back to life. Anyway, go ahead. Yes, that's that's a nice workaround that he's got in the magic system that, hey, we can kill our protagonist anytime we want because he can come back now. Oh, man, exactly. what a cheat. But with exactly. the caveat that we, it's never because that's never explained, you don't know how many lives he gets. Is it every time? Right. And it becomes a bigger, it's like, yeah, okay. What's the, what's what's going on with this? Um but so you have that moment where you realize it's three pieces. Kylar's missing a part. It talks about how do you take in your magic powers? Do you remember how they take in the magic powers? Um, uh, they eat and then they become awesome. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You're Was reading that a different book. Else? That's such okay. dancer. Um, it's sunlight and fire. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. See, They're the, solar powered. <laughs> this is this is the this is what I mean. Like the magic system on your first read through on this, I, I totally get that people are coming out of it going, I didn't get it. But Can as I, soon as I as soon as someone says. This. Oh, yeah, I remember that because it's not important to the plot. The magic is not a crucial part to the plot of this story. Yeah. You kind of let it go. Right. Your, your, brain, your brain skims over well, those little details. For so much of it, Kylar doesn't have it. Like, he's not using his magic. He's just naturally talented as an assassin. So you don't even really think about... Wet boy. <laughs> I'm just going to... Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Stephanie. But for so much of it... Star Wars. <laughs> You just don't realize because he does. He does not make a point that Kylar is even magical at any point because it's not until the very end when he's like, oh, and then he doesn't even know how to use it. I don't know what I did. I just did it. So it's hard to, as a reader to go, well, you can't, the, the person using the magic doesn't even know how they're using it. How can I understand how they're using it? Yeah. Oh, I can jump in on that one. Um, because basically um, it's not only discovery by the character. Well, I mean, there's two ways to write that. I mean, you, you've got something where the audience or the reader knows something the character doesn't and vice versa. But, um, you know, now I'm totally forgetting my point because I'm totally <laughs> looking at you. I'm, I'm looking at all your books. I'm sorry. I'm very ADD. Go ahead. <laughs> So yeah, we've got we've got a lot of books behind us here in the studio. It's yeah, true. Do. We do that. It's a, it's a tactic to uh, to discombobulate our guests. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a good thing I take my Adderall before the show. Thank you. <laughs> um. Uh. Oh shoot. Oh, you know, I was I had to leave. I had to read uh, the comment from Abe Lincoln Froman, uh, uh, our new favorite. No, not not new favorite. One of our new favorite redditors. Because what a name. You have a favorite uh, child, don't you? So anyway, <laughs> so Abe Lincoln Froman says, uh, he also wanted to talk about the magic and says, my understanding of the Night Angel magic system, having only read the Way of Shadows, can be summarized as follows. They always capitalize talent, so that's something. What in the name of the hundred gods is the magic magic system in this series? <laughs> I thought okay, hold on. That's I'm the perfect way of putting it. The Force. That's what I was going to say before. Yeah. The magic system is like the Force in Star Wars. I hate to keep going back to Star Wars, but it's like the Force. Yeah, why not? It's uh, That works. What is the Force? The Force is the thing that Jedis are strong with. What are Jedis? They are people who are strong in the Force. <laughs> and I don't want to hear about how Jedi is the plural of Jedi. Just I shut wasn't up. saying... Oh, I wasn't you know what? Saying. I will jump in on that conversation any day of the week. <laughs> this is the, I'm a huge uh, Star Wars fan, by the way, but this is the thing. Think about it. I mean, the Force, you know, it was a mystical thing that people drew off of, but no one actually knew what it was. Yeah, right. And that's kind of the it point was never of it, explained. right? Thank you. And this is exactly the point of the magic system that we read in this book. Yep. Yeah, I think, and that's, we get that there are, there are two magic systems, by the way, guys. Are there two? Or I thought maybe there Sorry. were eight. No, <laughs> I, I was, well, because there's like, are they witches or are they mages or are they wizards or are they... Uh, wet boys. There's Maja, Magus, wet boys, like, <laughs> exactly. There's nothing, but basically, we get to deal with two two major things: two good guy magic, bad guy magic, talent, um, the capital T, which is what Kylar has, what the other wet boys have, um, and other magical beings have uh -huh. is talent for the most part. But then there's also like Neft Data, like witchery, Veer, 
Veer. It's oh, called that's the, right. Like, you the... probably recognize Veer. We they literally say pretty much nothing about it other than using the term, so it's in your vocabulary when you come down the road later. Well, we know what's what's uh, not not uh, so uh, Russian. Dorian. Dorian. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Dorian. Uh, use he doesn't even use it. He just like he allows it. it. He allows it into his system well, for just vein, a moment. Like when the veins yeah. and everything come yeah, out, the black on appears. On yeah. So we do see some effect of it. Uh, makes him sick or makes him evil or makes him something. It's it's the one ring of magic systems. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, don't put it on. So if you if you came to this podcast looking for a refresher core, like figuring out what the magic system is, you weren't really supposed to catch it on your first read through and like understand it good. all. Okay, good. It's fine because it's not plot centric. But it's there. Good. So when you go back through it, understand there's talent, there's veer. You get it by standing in the sun or being like you recharge yourself by standing in the sun or being near a fire. You have to have all three pieces to be able to access it. Like yeah, yeah. there's your there's your primer on the magic system of <laughs> the Night Angel trilogy. Good. All right. You so, know, what? they're like elements of the earth when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. No, that works for me. I, I wanted to move on to talk about it a different. Uh, a different topic here, his capabilities as a writer of prose. Okay. And how we feel about that. And so I'll, I'll bring it up with some lame name 7173, which which does end up being a very lame name when you end <laughs> it with numbers like that. Some lame name 7173, uh, <laughs> who's been with us for some time. So uh, I hope they're okay with me making fun of them, uh, says... Thoughts on the quotes from the Bible. So, there, you know, a bunch of little things sprinkled throughout the book. And I, I was foolish enough not to actually mark any of them down. And so you'll pardon me if, I, if I'm if i not pulling them, them up. But just little, you know, like stuff that you'd find in Proverbs or something. Um, As I say, I don't remember Bible quotes. I will admit, it's been a while since I've been actively engaged in a Bible study. <laughs> but I knew my New Testament really well. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. But but uh, so Jafu responded to that and said that they were proverbial enough for me that it didn't really seem out of place. Weeks could have changed the exact wording easily enough. I assume it was an intentional decision not to. Um, this sort of thing, it's, it is something that in this particular read through didn't bother me, but I did notice it. Um, if, uh, if you'll excuse me going back to a Sanderson reference, do you remember in the hero of ages and don't worry anybody, th this won't spoil anything, but there's a moment in the hero of ages when a character refers to, uh, a hat trick and, uh, it, 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 he uses the phrase hat trick and one of his characters says it, uh, she, she's like a, a hat trick of something or other, whatever. And, uh, and it's a very modern phrase. Throw, and it has a very specific origin, right? In uh, in hockey, as far as I know, in a um, sport that any of the like, because you use hat, hat trick in soccer and hockey. And right. I don't. I don't know which whatever, one it started but... with. But point being, you know, it it is a little bit weird to be reading a story that's supposed to be set somewhere else. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's a distant planet or just an alternate universe or whatever. But this is not our world. These are not people who grew up in a. Uh, a, a Western who? Christianized <laughs> world. What says says who? Oh, uh, I mean, okay, fine. But well, hold on, but, but, you, know, you know, you know, you know, the writer did that on purpose, right? What? That Bible quotes? No, as far as the hat trick, I, infusing I, infusing a modern term into, you know, the writing there. I, I, I have wait. I have my doubts that it was on purpose. I think it slipped through the editing process myself. Mm -mm. No way. Okay, let's. Uh, well, all right. We're gonna take a break. Maybe I don't know. We're gonna take a break and argue about the Hero of Ages for just a second. All right. So let's hear it. What's your What's your defense of the hat trick? Um, my defense of the hat trick is this: is that um, I call it creative liberty. I call it the author, you know, like putting in a little something that for the audience to catch, like you just did. I did the same thing with the Immortal Girls, where I did basically okay during the time of Joan Arc, Joan of Arc, which is the 1400s. Um, one of the soldiers had a zipper. Well, the zipper wasn't even invented back then, but I put it in on purpose to see if someone would catch it, and people did. I'm All thinking right. maybe he, maybe the same thing. I'm telling you, authors do that, you guys. 
Are we have fun with it because it's so much. Because you know what, people will sit around like we are right now. We'll talk about it. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. In my opinion, that's just my opinion. Maybe. All right, all right, all right. I see uh, that. But okay, so back to because uh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna debate that any further. I don't think because we should get back to Night Angel. What in well, the world were we just talking? Bible here, here, quotes. Yes, Bible quotes. Here's the <laughs> thing. I, I I'm on the side with uh, Jafu. Um, in the sense that it's proverbial enough, it didn't really cause a problem for me. Uh-huh. There. But the thing is, is there is a religious group in this story that follows what they call the one God. Oh, okay. Like, the one, like, and its tenants are very much Christian tenants in, or I should say, monotheistic. Maybe not Christian may not be the right thing because I don't under, I don't have a wide. They, they ring true to a Judeo-Christian audience. Yeah, it it easily connects there. It might connect with others as well, but. The fact that he uses quotes that you can you could look at and go, yeah, I th- I'm pretty sure that's Proverbs seventy five three whatever you know. I think that just lends to a piece that he's put in there and having a monotheistic religious sect that is his moral right on that. Yeah, I think my defense of the Bible quotes thing would be something along the lines of if uh, if it, you have to balance. Uh, you have to balance the world building with the needs of the audience, the needs of the readers. If the readers uh, are swimming in unfamiliar, you know, terminology and whatnot, sometimes it can get a little bit overwhelming. And so you throw them a bone by putting in a phrase that they're going to understand, whether it's uh, whether it's something out of Proverbs or whether it's a hat trick or whatever. It, it can work to... Um, to reassure the reader that they understand the emotion of a certain scene or something like that. So that could be something that's going on, but that kind of actually segues into something else that I wanted to bring up. And, uh, and I hope we have our little bleep machine ready uh, because what I want to talk about is the word because, and uh, okay. You said it, not me. For for those. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Oh, it turns out our bleep machine does work. So I'm talking about the F word. Um, there, it, this word is used liberally throughout the book and I'm fine with that generally speaking. Um, but in this book, in the final pages, there was a moment when I felt like it was really out of place. And it was when, uh, you know, the dust is all settling and he, uh, uh, what, what's his, what's our Azoth, um, Kylar is having his conversation with Eileen and, he's he's come back to life and he's trying to convince her hey let's let's run away together let's let's be together forever because we love each other and he's he even mentions something about how oh i'm so glad mama k taught me how to talk to people but he says and i i apologize i don't have the passage here in front of me but he says something like i'm asking you to love me i'm not asking to f-. and i'm like that yeah, it, it was that. it was weird because you're right. That is weird. It, well, it was we, It was a weird placement of the word because it was um, it, it was kind of an emotional moment. They're trying to connect, and he used this vulgarity that would have made all the sense in the world if he was in a brothel or talking with his buddies or you know it just mm-hmm. in some offhand conversation. But he's he's consciously, and it's this is in the text. He is trying to speak to her uh and use the right words to convince her to come with him and i kind of felt like well gosh uh are brent are you just using that word because you've used it throughout the whole book yes (laughs) but no see and i i feel like it's actually a stronger choice to use it because he's he's saying that i love you this isn't it, this isn't a vulgar thing. There, like, yeah, there's so much more to it. So, like, I don't know. I, I remember reading it, and I didn't think that it felt out of place. Yeah. Because in the world he came from, the the underground that he lives in, the ideas of how much time he spent in the brothels and the way he was, his upbringing, that's exactly what sex was. Sure. Like, there's no love behind it. So being that vulgar about it, that's what it was. Yeah. So to talk to her in that respect and say, I love you. This is more than my upbringing has taught me. I'm, I know, and I understand better 
than that. I know what asking you of all people to to come away with me that this is love, this is honest, this is true. Right. This isn't just no, that let's, makes sense. Let's go sleep together because I, I can. Like you've, you've. I think you've pretty much convinced me. It, it's, it's very possible that that's just my personal hangups. And like I said, I don't really have much of a personal hangup with that word. I think it's, it's just a product of you know, my own upbringing or my own things being brought into the story. But I kind of felt like, <clears throat> like it took me out of that scene in particular for some reason. Because it's you. You're right. You wouldn't expect that to be used there, and it shows how odd their relationship and how odd that all is yeah because of, and it, it should be jarring and this is a theme for the series put a pin in this theme because it matters the difference between loving and and what ryan and I, I, casual <laughs> sex you can say casual your, sex your wife is sitting right next i know to you. that's the thing just put, casual will you just put a bleep there. back where that's <laughs> that was so as if i said it yeah i will <laughs> yeah but yeah Griffin, we, will, we can just go with but casual sex like there's a difference and it matters and it's a it's something that gets explored quite a bit explored huh interesting choice of words <laughs> uh, no but but, but but i agree with you on the fact that the wording sounds weird when you read it because yeah. it's kind of like you're, you're like you're slamming to a halt it's like flowing and all of a sudden boom mm -hmm. yeah and that's again that and that could just be me myself and and what i was expecting out of that scene and and i probably should have thought about it a little bit uh the way that you guys were so yeah i like i like those points the way you brought them up but in a general uh i guess in a general way if we want to zoom out and just talk about his ability to write i was not i, I wasn't blown away but i was i i thought it was totally serviceable I got a little bit, and I know Kyle would bring this up as well if he were here. So, uh, because he and I talked about it a little bit, how um, I'm used to paragraphs being structured a certain way, and a character, the author will tell me that a character, um, you know, uh, Bob smirked, and then give me the chunk of of quotation from Bob. Uh, but it, there was a lot of like Kylar said. Durzo said, mm -hmm. Mama K said, if that, right? Yeah. And so there, some of that felt a little bit inartful compared to some of the other stuff that I've read. But yeah. after a while, I got used to it and it wasn't that big a deal. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, third, because well, you're reading in third person, third person is always a lot different than first person. Well, sure. That's I'm, granted, but uh, I, I'm not sure that that was the defining characteristic with what I'm talking about, but I know what you're, mm -hmm. what you're saying. I didn't read through this and find any phrases that went, oh, that was just artful. The way right. you crafted, that's a beautiful phrase. Like there are, there are great concepts to be discussed and uh -huh. considered like he, um, how one of the phrases on there that I've highlighted that I can't get to right now. Um, how can a man choose light and live, uh, or choose love and live dark? Something like that. It, I'm, I will, I will try and find the quote because, um, I have it highlighted in my Kindle. Uh, but there's there's a handful of ones that are just uh, when he's talking with uh, Count Drake and Drake's telling about his history and everything like there are a few phrases where he lays out a uh, an idea or a concept and it's I just think like this isn't good prose, but this is good discussion material. Sure. No, it's uh, it's the old thing about uh, being a storyteller versus uh, a poet. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the old. Uh, the the windows that Sanderson talks about where, uh, you know, Patrick Rothfuss writes stained glass windows and another author would write a clear glass window mm -hmm. through which to see, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's that kind of thing. Anyway, maybe we should move on to some other Reddit comments. What do you guys say? We can do that. I have a question, though. A character and grouping okay. that we haven't really talked a lot about, but I'm Then we're going to wait on Reddit comments. Ryan has something else to say. Uh, yeah, you're right. We are going to wait. Okay. What do you want to say? <laughs> Um, <laughs> how did you guys feel about Logan's getting to be king and his marriage to Janine? Oh boy. Oh boy. Like that basically from the time that that banquet starts, that's the end of the book, like 250 pages ahead oh, of the Oh, at end. least. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're, you're getting ahead to something I was going to bring up, the structure of the book where, okay, so I'm, I'm reading on my Kindle 
And so it has the little percentage mark in the corner. Mm -hmm. And it says, I, I want to say it was like 60% through. And they get to this banquet and the proverbial poop hits the proverbial fan. <laughs> You'll drop the F word. And I, know, it. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But, uh, but things start getting crazy. How about that? And, and I'm like, this feels like a climax. And it just went on and on and on for a while and it didn't end uh until gosh so yeah i didn't have a page count but it was a solid 30 percent of the book mm -hmm. was climax i was i was shocked when it started i was like he is not going to be able to maintain this and he did yeah he did i was well, that's what happens when you serious. have 20 characters you're following and oh, they're all true. reaching the exactly. climax at the same time you're like, <laughs> exactly <laughs> you have to cover them all yeah well ugh. And now Ryan is smirking because we've said climax eight <laughs> times in the last 60 seconds and talked about 20 characters climaxing at the same time. And yeah, Ryan, grow up. Okay. <laughs> so I'm refraining from jumping in now. <laughs> what, 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 what was your original? Why are we talking about this? Logan and Janine. Oh, yes. Okay. That like, it, it feels like a throwaway. Like this character Janine kind of becomes a throwaway and you feel bad because like, oh, hey, Logan falls in love with this after having having this whole thing with uh, Sarah, Sierra, Sierra, yeah. uh, Sierra Drake the whole time. And then he's going to marry Janine for, you know, the responsibility and duty and gonna becoming the king and everything. And then it turns and, out she's super hot. <laughs> she's super so, hot. So they fall in love <laughs> because this is a CW book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but the things like Logan finds in her in a very short time, he finds in her things that he didn't realize that he needed in a queen that he needed in a woman right and falls in love with her as he understands love to this point uh -huh, uh -huh. and then she's gone i've i have gone on record many times about getting frustrated with authors who take away things that you hand immediately like you hand it to them and they take it immediately away i did oh, it in yeah. farsi or a lot where it's like let my characters win once in a while okay okay and <clears throat> And this one, I feel that he strikes a balance better than some other oh, book series. Oh, man. Are you going to say because he brought her back to life at the end? No. Oh, okay. No, not because he brought her back to life. Uh, just in general, like, I don't feel like everything, like, every win is immediately followed by an immediate loss. Right. Um, oh, but but this one was. But this one, it was like, Logan can't catch a break now. Like, we haven't really cared too much because he's kind of a rich kid that's just been a morally right person the whole sure, time. Sure, sure. But like now I'm feeling like, okay, Logan really is getting this. He's getting shafted a lot here. And I was just curious if you guys had. No. <laughs> Swipe that smirk. Craig smirked. Uh. <laughs> How can I not smirk? Okay. He's not the one getting shafted. But I don't All know. Right. I just thought that it's out was, of my system. I was. It's a plot point that I thought might merit some discussion. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, in all seriousness, the what, what's her name? Janine. 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 Jenny. Call me Jenny. Um, okay, Jenny. <laughs> I don't want to touch. For his gun, I don't want to touch that with a forty-foot pole. Um, <laughs> so, Jenny, I, I was actually, I was actually not uh, super stoked that she came back to life because I thought that their their bedroom scene right after the the non wedding wedding like I guess we're married now and we're supposed to go consummate this and so they go upstairs mm -hmm. they have their discussion and they they have at least the beginning parts of hey, you know maybe we could fall in love I thought it was really sweet uh, very well written and I thought a lot of the power of that scene came because uh, because of what happened afterwards where Roth shows up cuts her throat and you know supposedly she dies in logan's arms and and i thought that was actually really really great and then when she came back i was like oh well that undercut things a little uh and so i not knowing what's coming up in future books i'm like even, but even she standing on died. this but even standing on this i don't think it does because logan doesn't know that she's alive well sure but exactly. i exactly but i do and i'm all that matters <laughs> just just <laughs> Just generally, I mean, in life, anyway, and the universe. So yeah, Logan and Janine, and then Logan jumping into the hole at the end were plot points. I thought, sure, that were, sure. Like I, um, I did, I did roll my eyes a little bit when he was crowned king because uh, plot, 
because the great plot in the sky determined uh, that he would be the king. I, it felt kind of out of nowhere is all I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, I rolled my eyes a little bit. Whatever. It's I'm fine with it, ultimately. Griffin, you look like you're going to say something. Yeah. No, I was going to ask a quick question. As far as like him, you know, Logan jumping, why did he do that? There Wait, were there were guards coming. There were six witches, uh, evil wizards, that yeah. were coming down the hall. He had nowhere else to go to escape, so but he went into the pit of like you know the camels. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? He dropped. Yeah, he took the key and dropped himself into the pit. Figuring yeah. he would figure out how to get out later. Which I did like. You know what it reminded me of was, uh, did you ever see The Descent? It was this horror movie with these uh, girls who like to go spelunking and they're exploring a new cave system. Oh, and, and then yeah, it turns yeah, out there's yeah. these like cannibalistic humanoids uh, deep under the Appalachian Mountains. It's fantastic. Hmm. Uh, kind of reminded me of that a little bit. So that's all. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm fine with it. Is there anything else you wanted to say about it? Nope. Anything to... My little hopeless romantic heart, like the fact that she came back, I was like, oh, because <laughs> you like there is that there's that entire touching scene between the two of them, and then she dies, and I was like, what? What was that all about? Like, it's I was, so... I loved it, but I'm a, but you're not a hopeless romantic. Oh, you have no idea. You have no <laughs> idea. You you don't know how I've been looking at Griffin this whole time. <laughs> You know what? It's okay. You know what? I feel it. I feel the vibes coming yeah, yeah. the phone. It's uh, <laughs> over over fifteen hundred miles. We are connecting, without a doubt. <laughs> so uh, okay. So let's uh, do maybe one more Reddit comment, uh, and then we'd better start wrapping this thing up. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> done it. Done it. Done it. Okay. Do you feel, okay, this is a good one because it's uh, kind of uh, talking about the book as a whole. So we can use this to start wrapping our discussion a little bit. Do you feel that the level of grit, oh, I'm sorry, Jagd3, J-A-G-D-3. Ja- it's jagged. Jagged? jagged it's yeah, leet speak. Jagged. But it's But it's D3. Oh. J- jagged. Jagged. Jagdy, Jagdy three, Jet Jagdy. I'm going Jagdy. All right, so Jagdy. Oh, maybe he's a maybe it's like a Jag lawyer, Division three oh, or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I like it. I'm still going Jagdy because it sounds great, there but I go. like where you're going with that. One of these days, hey, I learned by the way, to say. You guys hear about the guy who actually couldn't afford a personalized license plate, so he changed his name to X Y Z three six four. No, just no. kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that one either. <laughs> uh, okay, so so Jagdi says, do you feel that the level of grit or edge or darkness in this book changed as the book went on? Being centered around active players in the underworld of an already seedy city, there were a lot of bad things happening to people throughout the book. The experience of myself and my friends who have read it is that it definitely seems darkest at the beginning, though. Do you think that is just because we as readers aren't used to seeing bad things happen to children, or does the world seem to get a little less dark as our protagonist grows and becomes more competent. Um, I don't know. Ryan, why don't you go first on this one? Uh, I do think that it is, it is largely in the fact that we don't tend to see or be willing to read um, about bad things and dark things happening to children. They happen all the time. Yes. In the real world. Yeah. Like, and we crazy don't, stuff happens. The thing is, oh. like, we don't think children are capable of what rat and things like that do in this story and so it feels really off and really wrong and i throughout this entire series i will tell you there are moments that are grossly uncomfortable like because of things like this it's like i i cannot believe that someone would really do that like that just seems off yeah um and so it does feel dark um but whereas we're totally okay with rat coming back as an adult and doing the exact same sort of thing to full out grown adults is that because is in a weird way are we do we think like as an adult yeah i kind of have some dark stuff in me so i can believe it of somebody else there could be a level of personal recognition in in it there could be just recognition of the world around us um and also there's a certain point where we say as adults adults have the ability to choose and adults have like to do something about it whereas children are don't we kind of put them in a box and say they can't they couldn't they they are people to be acted upon not act right, not actors right, themselves right. whereas adults are 
uh, our so by, actors... give, by giving them agency and making and making them use that agency in awful ways it's very uncomfortable yeah absolutely and okay, i think I it's intentionally done to make you feel that way and to realize so that when these characters come out of this situation and change and aim for something different and want something more or otherwise it's very believable because you would want to be out of that as well yeah yeah uh yeah, yeah. griffin thought okay. yeah my thought is that you guys are describing every walt disney film ever made Think about it. At the very beginning, what happens in every Walt Disney film? Either someone dies, the parents die, Bambi gets shot, or not mm -hmm. Bambi, but Dan Bambi's you know uh, mother gets shot. Spoiler alert. <laughs> sorry, 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 spoiler alert. But you, know, but you see what I'm saying though? But can I say, I love that formula because again, because think about it, that those characters are coming out of dire, dire circumstances. Yeah. And it's showing they can come through and, and, and there's redemption in that. But you know, as far as the readers being shocked, I mean, as far as kids, I mean, think about this. The, the the most awful thing that a kid could ever experience is loss of a parent or parents both, you know. And that's what, you know, <clears throat> children's films, they seem to thrive on that in Walt Disney. And so you're seeing the same kind of thing where it's a shocker at the beginning, right? Or they're saying it's a shocker at the beginning or it's really dark or whatever it is. And then it lights up as it goes along. You see what I'm saying? Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Yeah. And Frequently uh, in stories and movies like this, the, that sort of loss or that sort of thing is the impetus for driving our character into something different. And it's, it's exactly. common in fantasy. Like, uh, yeah. both loses his parents in King it, Killer. And yeah, so like, yeah. Like, that's, yep. it, it's pretty common. I get that. It, it I just is, think the mm -hmm. depth at which this story, this, uh, Brent Weeks takes this one yeah, yeah. is deeper than the tends to If Disney show, like... Oh, no, of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> no, I understand that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. They're not going to make yeah. a ride out of this in Anaheim. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, of course, I understand that, but I'm just saying, like the form, like, just kind of like the idea, the general premise is what you guys are talking about. It yeah. it is an interesting structure, though, if you think about the way that we're used to structures or uh, stories being structured, where, uh, you know, it, okay, nobody can see my hands, but pick your your hand, your your character is at a five, and we're talking about just in life or whatever, and then the author or the, whoever is going to take them down to a two or a one, you know, that's going to take them down to the pits so that when they rise, they rise higher than that five and they become a 10, whatever, if, yeah. if that mm -hmm. makes any sense. Uh, but what he does with his structure here is he starts them at a one mm -hmm. and yeah. then says, all right, let's see what you guys can do. How yep. high can you climb? And some, you know, some climb higher than others and, uh, uh and whatnot. But anyway, yeah. so it is a, it, it is a shocking way to structure the story because you're not given any time before these kids are doing just the worst things in the world to each other, right? Well, yeah. I think that's what that it's hard, especially as a parent, thinking of like my child and being in that kind of situation. It actually reminded me a lot of um, Ender's Game and especially oh, yeah. Ender's Shadow, where you follow oh, yeah. Bean's story and he comes from that same situation. He's in the the ghetto where these children are making those those tough decisions that we as adults don't want to think of children having to make. Exactly. If, uh, if Kyle were here, he would use that as a jumping off point to complain because he did to <laughs> me uh, in a different conversation. He, he thought hmm. that there were too many ripoffs of Ender's Game and Ender's Shadow and a few other stories as well. That's uh, interesting. Yeah. In this story or in... In, in this. Oh. In, yeah, in this particular... Well, well, I saw that too, but... Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I definitely saw the influences. I don't know if I, I would to go admit, as far... I have to I just made those that connection during this conversation, oh, really? and I read Ender's Game quite a few times, so... Yeah, yeah no, I've never I, made I that think, connection. Um, I, but what I think people should do is, uh, Kyle, I'm going to put the call out to Kyle and say he needs to hop on the post-episode discussion thread... Uh, his handle is Wolfhound KSL, and so if you if you want to find him, that's how you'll find him. Wolfhound underscore KSL, and you can argue with him about that, because uh, I know he would love to discuss <laughs> um, what he thought of the uh, of the uh, shall we say homages that uh, that he saw in. I want to know story. what they are. I can't think of them off the top of my head, other than the like child. Yeah, there's. I think there's a lot of like. Kylar's not a genius prodigy. Like it's he's... like I said in, uh, in at the beginning of the last episode when I was doing my recap. Like, there, the tropey tropes, uh, are are flying proudly. Mm -hmm. Right, they are they are there for the world to see, and so I think that you could draw a lot of parallels with a lot of different stories. Um, ultimately, it comes down to how well do you use those tropes, and I think he does it. 
quite well. Yeah. So um, anyway, why don't we move on to final thoughts? I'm sure we're if we're not over time, we're about to be. And so okay. let's do final thoughts. I think um, our final thought on this one, let's keep it simple and just say, uh, do you recommend, do you recommend, what's this called? The Way of... The Way of Shadows. The Way of Shadows. Thank you. I can only think of Night, Night Angel. Angel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> do you recommend The Way of Shadows to whom and why? Griffin, let's start with you. This will be your final thought on this book. Okay, thank you. Um, well, I, I would absolutely recommend it. Um, and I would also say that, you know, a pre also say as a caveat that you might want to read it, you know, another time, or, you know, two or three times to really get a better understanding each time of what you're reading. Um, and yeah, I, I would recommend this to, you know, probably young, you know, young adults, meaning maybe like 18, 25. All right. You know, you know, that sort of thing, you know, 30 year olds too. I mean, look, I, I think a, a plethora of people can enjoy this book. My um, adults. Yeah. Go ahead. I I've had this, uh, I've had this paperback since, uh, I was what, how old am I now? 32, 32. I've had mm -hmm. this paperback since my brother gave it to me when I was like 28. Uh, I think, yeah. oh, actually, it was after we started the show, you know, five years ago. is sometime after that. And he said, you guys should do this. You should read this. You'll love it. And he gave me the paperback and it sat on my shelf for, you know, four years or whatever. And, I, and I'm finally reading it. Um, and he's six, seven years older than me. And I understand now why, like, it, yes, it does. It, in some ways, it reads like a young adult thing. Mm. But in other ways, like, no, it doesn't matter if you're 30 or 40 or whatever. Like, it's, exactly. a, it's just fun. It's a lot of fun. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Just content wise, just be aware of exactly. who language, you're going to recommend it to. Language is a big thing. Yes. It's making sure, you know, who you're recommending it to and what they're com how comfortable they are with uh -huh. the language because uh, the language gets harsh at times. 100%. And that's why I said Megan, no. yeah. Megan should not read this book. Yeah. <laughs> Which is this, why I am here. <laughs> this is not a blue nice. team book. So, nice. Uh, all right, Ryan, nice. what do you think? Uh, obviously I recommend it because I've, Oh been yeah, because you did. Yeah. <laughs> and That's a dumb question. Sorry. <laughs> which is pretty much and I, the way what has been laid out so far is exactly who I'd recommend it to. If you are comfortable with more adult content, um, you want a good, a good adventure story, uh, but that deals with dark things, but great character development, things like that. This is definitely a, a great place to, to work off that. And I think personally, I would say that this is a good place to get into Brent Weeks's work because I'm don't hold me to this. I'm pretty sure this is like his first his series. first novel. His first series. Um any any thoughts to add to this train? I think the thing is don't be afraid to read it twice or three times cuz it is it's one of those books that it's a little confusing but the more you Finish read the it trilogy. Yeah, but the more you read it the easier it gets the more you understand like if you don't understand it the first time through read it again. If you enjoyed it's still, yourself. Yeah, it's still a good book. It mm. still has, has good characters, a good plot point. Like It does appear that this was his first novel, published novel anyway. And wow. so uh, it looks like actually all three of these were published in 2008. And that's something I'd like to dig into and find out more about why they were all published in 2008. So that's we can talk to... about it more when we finish the trilogy. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, we will. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, very good. Let's uh, wrap up our discussion then. And uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. And thank you, Griffin, for joining us. Uh, just to remind everybody, you can go to griffinstark5.com. That's the numeral five. griffinstark5.com. Uh, or check out Immortal Girls directly. You can go to Amazon and search Immortal Girls with a five. It's think, think, dead, a five. think dead Mouse, right? It's like Dead Mouse, exactly. but Immortal Girls. Um, and go check that out and let us know what you think of it if you happen to get to it before we do. Speaking of which, go to thelegendarium.reddit.com and join in the conversation after this episode. There will be a post-episode thread and you can join in and talk with us about all this stuff on there. Also, patreon.com slash legendarium is where you can go and support the show. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for having me, guys. All I really right. appreciate it. Okay, thanks, Griffin, and uh, we'll talk to you guys all next time.